Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is nearly time for the London Marathon, my favourite race experience of the year bar none. I'm super excited to thought I'd sit down, give you all my absolute top tips from running this race five separate times, everything from 2.36 to four hours and three minutes. I've seen it all and I want to impart a little bit of that knowledge and help so you can get an amazing race time out there. To sit back, relax, let's get this video done. So I'm sure the nerves are starting to build now, but don't worry, well over 99% of the people that start the London Marathon will finish. Over a million people have done so, so far, raising over one billion pounds for charity. London Marathon is a very unique event. It's all about charity runners out there, a lot of first timers doing something amazing, as I was when I was 18. Cue the cringe picture now. A lot of people want to just do it once and then never again. But like myself, I got the running bug there and it's changed my life forever now. Both myself and my partner who's filming this video will be racing this year and you'll be hosting a shakeout run on the Saturday. Details are down below if you want to come along. So we're filming this all about the 2023 race. It's always fairly similar. We'll split this video up into three different sections before the race, during the race and after the race. Right let's get stuck in two before the London Marathon. So before the race, you're going to want to head to the London Marathon Expo, which is at Excel in the east side of London. This is open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday are the busiest days. If you're already in London, please get down there on Wednesday and Thursday. You'll have the same experience, but it'll be far nicer with a few less people around. While you're there, you will need to collect your race number and also a big plastic bag that you will put all your personal belongings in when you get to the start line. There'll be loads of stalls and stands and stuff to buy new gear. Don't buy anything new for the race, of course, and just have a look around and take in the whole amazing running vibe. There'll be talks and all sorts of stuff. You can probably allow for about an hour to two hours for this or you can just dip in and out uh, to grab your race number and head out if you want to. Now as I just said they're going to give you a plastic bag and with that plastic bag you're going to want to put in all of your race day essentials for traveling to the start line of the race. We've got a downloadable PDF, a little tick list of everything. We'll link to that down below of everything you want to be taking to the race. My sort of golden three essentials are my body glide because I don't want any chafing a loo roll because they inevitably run out of loo roll in all the portaloos at the start and also something like a throwaway not you're not going to want to throw away a top like this but a throwaway top that will keep you warm at the start line get something like this for all your rest days which you will have during the end of the race these are available on the website so the start of the race is on Blackheath in Greenwich now there will be different stations to travel to depending on what start line you're from but don't worry too much all the start lines are fairly close together the color of the numbers on your bib will reflect which start line you are off so if you forget just check what the color is on your bib also on the morning of the race you have got free travel by taking your number with you please please check out the official pdf guide we'll link that down below on the london marathon website which has every little bit of information you could possibly need and also get your race day hat something like this the all new ben parks london marathon hat which will be perfect for race day whatever the conditions and get you powered through that race to that pb right let's move on to chat about everything during the race a lot of people do panic at the start because it takes a long time to cross the start line and they're worried that they're not going to get a very good time. Well, don't panic at all. You will have a chip, which is part of your race number that will be attached to your body. And when you cross the start line, that's when your personal stopwatch or clock will start ticking over. It is going to be fairly busy for the first mile. There's over 40,000 people to go across these various start lines. But don't worry, it does very soon open up. Don't panic. Don't start trying to overtake people. It just na everybody sort of naturally gets going up to pace pretty soon, so don't worry. The first four miles are fairly pedestrian, and then we do hit a bit of a downhill in Woolwich. I'd say you will end up inevitably going a little bit faster than your goal pace down this hill. Just go with it. Don't feel like you have to hold on the brakes or anything, but equally don't speed up down this hill. And then the rest of the course is fairly undulating. You'll have no doubt done a few sort of gentle undulating hills as part of your training, especially if you live in the UK. In terms of pacing strategy for the race, I'd say pace it fairly evenly. There's nothing you particularly worry about towards the end of the race as I say it's just gently undulating but really no big hills out there of any significance and if you want some help with your pacing there are 132 paces out there on the course pacing everybody between three hours 
and seven hours, 30 minutes. We'll link to that sort of pacing bit down below and we'll put a rough guide up on the screen now with the various pacing groups. When you're in your starting corrals or starting areas at the start of the race, have a look around for these people around you and then stick with them as they cross the start line. They'll pace you very nicely, evenly, all the way through the race to get you that time. There are 12 different water stops out on the course and four different LucasAid stops as well. If you don't know LucasAid, it's just our version of Gatorade or something here in the UK, just a sports drink. And there's also gels that are given out, LucasAid gels, which are given out at 14 and 19 miles. So in total there, you've got 16 different refreshment points and two different gel points. There is a blue line, which is the official measured line, which will be the 42.2K or 26.2 miles. Inevitably, with how rising races are, it's impossible to stick on that line and people will be weaving around a little bit. Your GPS is likely to clock up a lot more. Well, not a lot more than that, but a bit more than that, maybe three or 400 meters more than that. And in terms of London specifically, we run through an area called Canary Wharf, which is a big financial area in London, very tall skyscrapers, and it's likely to throw your GPS off a little bit. So you might be clocking up a little bit more extra distance. Your watch will clock up a little bit more extra distance and you're actually running through there. Every time I finish the race, my watch has always been about 42.6k but I have seen it up at 43 43.5 for some other people as well so my top tip is always just to have lap pace on your watch and just run the kilometer or particular mile that you're in at that time or alternatively you can use the mile markers which are out on the course and just manually lap your watch as you go through there now in terms of the best crowds we'll put some footage up on the screen going through Cutty Sark is amazing that's where we live where we're filming this video for now so for us it's amazing to run through home Tower Bridge one of the loudest areas of any marathon course anywhere in the world. Running through Canary Wharf, as we just said, the noise echoes and bounces off all of the skyscrapers. Rundown crew, a big running crew here in London, got a big cheer station around about mile 21. And then finally running down embankment, chasing down Big Ben clock as you turn at the Houses of Parliament and then down the mall to the finish. It's just one of the most amazing loud experiences you can ever experience in running. If you're a supporter and want to know the best places to watch, which are a little bit quieter, those places are all great, but some quieter ones, usually around the Isle of Dogs, it's fairly quiet, you'll be able to spot people there very easily. What we call the Rotherhithe Loop around Surrey Keys, Shadwell as well, and you can spot people on both sides of the road there going in different directions. Now if you are visiting London and you're not sure how to get around, you can use your contactless bank card to tap in and tap out at all the stations. If you do want to track your runners out there, you need to download the official race day app, which for London is usually pretty good. These apps have got very good now, and they'll also have live-ish tracking of where your runner is likely to be on the course, just where they're predicted to be, sort of how fast they're going. Right, let's move on to chat about after the race. It's a really good idea before you start the race to have an agreed meeting point after the race. Now this area called Horse Guards Parade, which is probably around three or 400 meters after you've crossed the finish line. They're big letters and you can arrange to meet people at a specific letter. So for example, I might say to my friends, I'll meet you at the letter B and they'll see on their official app when I've crossed the finish line. So I know roughly when to get there to meet up. There's inevitably with the amount of people in central London, the signal on your mobile phone is not always the best. It is getting a little bit better every single year. And then yeah, for all people that have done the London Marathon, there is completely free transport back home if you're in London. Uh, up until about 6.30 that day. So that's it guys, my few little tips all about the London Marathon. My favorite race, please add your favorite race day tips below to help out the community. And finally, of course, best of luck out there. You will be amazing. We can't wait to hear all of your stories. Come and see us at the Showcat Run if you want to, but ultimately cross that finish line, big smile on your face. I know you can do it and I can't wait to hear all about it afterwards. Best of luck out there. We'll see you very soon and keep on getting it done.